Okay. So yeah. So today we discuss this paper two one. Uh, two thousand nineteen October November. Let's start from first question. So, okay. So whenever you see this modulus graph, I say in your syllabus basically you only have two choice, right? Um, it will be either it's a V shape or a W shape. So how do I know it's a V or W? Basically, depend on the x power. It's x power one, like this case, x is power one is a linear, you will get v. If x power two is a quadratic, you will get w. So in this case, right now you want to get v. So for v, basically you have two important things you you need to find. First is the vertex, uh, which is the x-intercept we make y zero, and another one is the y-intercept, so which is we make x zero. Okay, so okay, so I make y zero first. So when y equals to zero, then zero will equals to the modulus two x minus three. Then this is two x minus three, right? Equals zero. Then x will be three over two. So if x equals to three over two, then yeah, I know where is three over two. Three over two is kind of one point five, right? One point five is here. Okay, then I want to find the y in the set i make x zero then i will get negative three become positive three which is here isn't it so yeah then you will have a graph like that so let me see i can draw a straight line here or not can i yep oh my god so hard to use this thing yeah so then you have another line which will be Reflection of this, so 1.5, uh, 1.5, 1.53 here you are at 4 Because it's a reflection, right? So you should be something like this Okay, so yeah, this is your graph Quite simple, right? Because this coordinate and this coordinate must be symmetry Because this is a v, v shape, right? So they must be symmetry, okay? And then the next thing they ask you to solve So you just move this thing to the other side, become modulus 2x minus 3 positive because negative, right? It become positive. If I want to eliminate the uh, modulus here, the other side will have plus minus, right? Then I have two choice here. Either 2x minus 3 equals to 7 or 2x minus 3 equals to negative 7. Yeah, and then I just solve this one. Uh. This is 10 over 2 is 5. This is negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. Yeah, so far so good. Okay, right. Move on. Huh? <laughs> okay. Um, trigonometry graph. Okay, first thing is whenever trigonometry graph, right? The first thing I will check is the uh is side cos or tangent. So obviously this one is a cos. Then okay, so cos. So when I see the cos here, right? I will check the amplitude first. So um, what is the maximum or minimum? The maximum here will be the six right the minimum will be negative two negative two right so i want to find what is the middle value first so you can take the six plus negative two divide by two which is um we which is what is that <laughs> six two right yeah so you six plus negative two divided by two you will get two right so this is the middle one. So I will assume this one will be my new x acid. Because my x acid is supposed to be here, right? If this is a new x acid, what, what is happening here is, okay, I can get my amplitude, which is my a value here. From two here, I plus four unit, I minus four unit. Do you see that? So therefore my q value will be four. Because Q value will be my amplitude, isn't it? Okay, what is P value? P value is from your original X acid to the new X acid. How many unit is actually shift up or shift down? So obviously you can see the original X acid is zero. He moved to positive two, right? So it's go up two unit is positive two, but we, we didn't write positive. But if go down two unit, you have to write a negative, all right? And R will be decide like how many cycle it have in two pi. R will be how many cycle it have in two pi. 
So right now, this is two pi, right? We have how many cycle? One. This is first cycle. Two. This is the third cycle. Three. One cycle, two cycle, three cycle. R is three. You got it? Yes, right? You sure? Uh? I move on, uh? move on. Uh? <laughs> Can I understand, please? Let me know. Uh? Or else I worry I teach too fast. Okay. This is the third thing, um, uh, third, third questions. So, okay. Um, quite easy. Yeah, whenever you see the exponent, um, you will need to do the long thing. You, you can expand it first or you straight away add the lawn. Both will actually give you the same result. Um, let me see which method I like. Um, never mind. I straight away add the LN for both sides. Um, this one will be LN. 3E negative 4 3X. All right. Uh, log rule tells us that the power, we can move to the front, right? So become 2X plus 1. Multiply ln E. Ln e is basically equals to 1, uh, so I'm going to change it in the next step. But if you understand, I straight away do. La. So basically, you will get 2x plus 1 multiply 1, because ln e is actually equals to 1. Alright, but then here you have a 3 here, and then the relationship between them is a multiply. So this one is ln 3 plus ln e 4 minus 3x. Alright, so here is just 2x plus 1, nothing. Uh, ln 3 is just a number, so I just ignore it, I just write ln 3. And then the power, I can move to the front, right? Ln e is 1, so I will get 4 minus 3x. Right, so right now, I want to solve it. That means I need to find the x. So I move the 3x to this side, I will get 5x. I move the 1 to the other side, it becomes minus 1. It goes to ln 3 plus 4 minus 1 is 3. So x will equal to ln 3 plus 3 over 5. Um, if the question asks you to live in exact form, then this is your final answer. Uh, if not, if you're not so comfortable about this answer, you can just type everything in the calculator. La. Plus 3 divided by 5. Uh, 3 significant figures, so 8, 2, 0. Oh. Okay, so yeah, this is the answer. Okay, so the next one is a log. Uh, quite simple. So, Whenever we do the log, um, first thing is we want to check is both of the log have the same base or not. LG means what? LG basically means the common log, right? Log base 10. Okay, they have the same base. Alright, so when they have the same base, you see a plus here, it indicates that basically I need to factorize out the log first. So I factorize out the log. So then plus means multiply. Then I will get y plus 15. Equals to two. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing this uh, log a plus log b equals to log a b. Uh. I'm using this formula, okay? Just in case you do not know what happened here. And then the log 10, if I throw to the other side, the base will become a number. The number here will become the power. So this is 10 power of 2. And here I will just expand like normal. This is y squared plus 15y minus 6y will be... It will be 9y, isn't it? And then this one is minus 90. Alright, so... Is it 9y? Yes, right, okay. So then the 100s here, move here, will become minus 100. So minus 190 equals 0. And then you need to factorize this thing. Um, I hope you can factorize so you can do the EQN thing. Um, let me use back the old, cal old calculator. Alright, so my A is 1, my B is 9, my C is negative 190. Okay, good. Oh, can be 19 and 10. Okay, so will be Y plus 19, Y minus 10. So therefore, I will have Y equals to negative 19 and Y equals to 10. And yeah, uh, you most of the time you will just stop here because you already find the answer. But because this is log, log you need to understand is the if this is log a, a must always bigger than zero because it's a is 
uh, equal to zero or less than zero, you basically you will get math error. So in this case, you cannot accept negative 19. Because if you sub the negative 19 back into the y here, you will realize you will get undefined, right? You will get math error because you will get a uh, y negative 4. It, uh, log, log negative 4. Log negative 4 will be math error. So I will need to write the rejected. You only can have one answer. Okay? So for log question, you always need to check uh, are you getting negative or not? Okay? Um, okay, number four here. This one will be simultaneous for the third question. Okay, um, uh, why so easy one? Uh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay, um, depend you, you prefer substitution or elimination, but because I see like 2x and 3x sounds, sounds okay so so i will just like make both of them become 6x and then i use the elimination so this one have time 3 this one have time 2 so if i have time 3 i get 6x plus 3y equals to 15 this one gets 6x uh, minus 2 third 2y equals to 14 and then i minus them uh, 6x and 6x are eliminates then this is 3y minus this one become uh, 3y plus right so become 3 plus 2 third 2 y then this one minus i get 1 then i get my y value is 1 over 3 plus 2 third 2 they ask you give your answer x and y in this form so you you know your y cannot live in this pattern right so i need to do the rationalize that means this is a plus b i need to multiply a minus b so a minus b a minus b because my a is 3 b is 2 sub 2 in this case um then rationalize i will get a square minus b square b square is oh never mind i just write like this first lah, then only i simplify so top will be just like this all right then i can simplify here this is y equals to or 3 minus 2 sub 3 this bottom will be 9 minus 4 times 2 is 8 okay i got my answer 3 minus 2 sub 3 for y and then i want to get my x here um if i can choose definitely i will choose back the so, e yes i think your i think it's 3 minus 2 square is 8 right yes so this is your rationalize yeah Why have the square root 3 there? Why, what happened? Oh my god. Thanks, thanks, thanks. <laughs> Why suddenly 2 will become 3? Why so funny? Yeah, so is this the correct answer? I hope so. Uh, I actually do have the marking scheme beside me, so I will cheat a little bit uh, to check my y answer. 3 minus 2 third 2. Yeah, correct. Okay, then if, if you want to find the x, right? You want to find the x. Uh, I will choose, because you have four equations, one, two, three, four, choose the easier one, okay? I will choose this one. This one look a lot easier. 2x plus y equals to 5, right? So 2x plus, my y will be 3 minus 2 sub 2 equals to 5. Okay, so I want to find the x, I'm going to move around. So it will be uh, 5 minus 3 will be 2, this one will be plus 2 sub 2, so x will be divide 2 1 plus 2 okay so yeah this five mark is not too hard to earn yeah if you don't like about elimination methods right um you can do the substitution no problem right? mm -hmm. but because i i oh if whenever the simultaneous can do elimination i always do that because i find that i find that actually easiest to to solve the question okay move on to the next one um kinematics uh i know you haven't learned but let's let me just like should i go through ah uh, it's fine i will skip this one if later i have time maybe i teach you guys a bit on on this topic also okay number six here so the curse x y equals to 11 plus 5 
um, we'll cut the line y equals to x plus 10 at the point a and b. So the midpoint of a, b is the point c. Okay, so show that the point c actually lies on this line, um, 7 mark. Uh, it's not too bad, this question. Uh, the first thing is you realize uh, this one is a curve, right? right because you see x, y, and x is a curve. Is, is a curve. So the curve cut the straight line at two different points. You see this information, what, what you will do is you are doing simultaneous, okay? This is how you get the two, two coordinate, the intersection point. You just start one equation into another equation, you will get the intersection point. All right, so this one already y is a subject, so it's just nice. So I just substitute the y into this y here. So y will be x plus 10 equals to 11x plus 5, okay? So yeah, I will solve this one. x squared plus 10x minus 11x minus 5 equals to 0. x squared, oh my god. Um, because it seems like, seems like a decimal. x plus 10 sub into here, x squared. Because normally this topic you won't have the decimal, but I think we have some exception here. Yeah, we have the exception here. <laughs> we have, we'll get decimal, it's fine. Uh, decimal, because this, does this question tell you to show exact value or you can leave in decimal point? Um, yeah, depend what you like. If, yeah, you can use these methods to actually find the value b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So my b will be negative 1, minus negative 1 become positive 1, plus minus square root of b squared, negative 1 square will be 1, minus 4, 1, c will be negative 5, over 2, 1. So my x have two answer, plus minus square root of 21 over 2. Yeah, then I need to find the y. Okay, interesting. Um, okay, one plus square root twenty one over two plus ten. So then I will do the minus one. Okay, so I make I make the same denominator times two times two, so it's twenty. So it'll be twenty one plus twenty one over two. Then I got the first coordinate here which is 1 plus square root 21 over 2, comma 21 plus square root 21 over 2. I believe all of you prefer decimal, right? If you prefer decimal, yeah, just go ahead to do the decimal thing. Okay, another one is 1 minus square root 21 over 2, and then plus 10. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's 21 minus square root 21 over 2. So we have 1 minus square root 21 over 2, and then 21 minus square root 21 over 2. So you can call anyone is A or B, it doesn't matter. Then the next thing is you need to find the midpoint of it, which is a coordinate C here. So midpoint basically x plus x, okay, x plus x. 1 minus square root 21 over 2 divided by 2 comma and then y plus y over 2 minus square root 21 over 2 over 2 wow interesting um okay this is same denominator same denominator so 1 plus 1 you get 2 2 divided by 2 you get 1 so the first one is 1 over 2 same this same denominator, 21 plus 21 is 42. This is 21, right? <laughs> so square root 21 minus square root 21, gone. So 42 divided by 2, 21. So it's 21 over 2. Okay, so this is the, this is the this is coordinate C. All right, this is the coordinate C, okay? So I want to test whether this coordinate is is lying on this straight line or not. So it's very easy. So if you sub the x value, into here you get the y value then that means it's on the line or you can sub the y you choose either one so i say okay when my x equals to 1 over 2 so 1 over 2 plus y equals to 11 
So y is equals to 10.5. So 21 over 2 is 10.5, right? So yeah, sure. Yeah, this is how we show this kind of questions. So I am not sure whether you live in the decimal you can show or not because yeah, you can test this out. Yeah, because I I worry the I'm not sure how many decimal you should take three or four because the more decimal you take uh, you have higher chance to actually get the result. But yeah, <laughs> this is how you do this kind of question. Seven mark. Okay, uh, factor theorem. So use the factor theorem to show that um, 2x minus 1 is the factor of px. Okay, so factor theorem tell you what? What is the factor theorem? F a equals to 0. Okay, this is the factor theorem. So you know, use the factor theorem to, to show this one is the factor, right? That's mean, that's mean if I sub the 1 over 2 into this, px i should get zero okay how do you get a is you make your factor equals to zero like 2x minus 1 equals to zero then your x is 1 over 2 so this one at the same time is your a value okay remember this so therefore um yeah in this case is p a equals zero <laughs> yeah it's, it doesn't matter Okay, never mind. That one is just a factor theorem. I okay. So that's mean I will do p one over two equals to zero. Please write like this first. Now I I know a lot of you actually prefer write p one over two and then copy this equation here. Uh, which is correct <laughs> in this case because you need to show this case you need to show yes. So it's four one over two cube plus nine one over two minus five. So yeah, if I get a zero, mean I already show actually is is the factor. So let's see is zero or not. This is one over eight plus nine over two minus five. So this is half. So half plus nine over two, I get ten. I no, I get ten over two. Ten over two, yeah, I get zero. Yeah, right, sure. Um, yeah, just one mark, just one mark. Uh, right, px. As the product of the linear of quadratic so first thing is you have to understand what this question try, trying to say or what they want so as the product of linear and quadratic like so that's that's mean you must have a linear factor maybe it's ax plus b quadratic is maybe like uh, cx square plus dx plus e okay this is what they want so they basically ask you to write px in this pattern okay you ignore about a b c d e basically it's just a constant number okay so so yeah so since you know the factor already you can do the long division um and i always prefer long division i know some of you actually learn another method can be straight away factorized um okay here i want to say is you realize this is x x q and then x and then constant you you do not have the x square here. So when you do the long division, you have to add the zero x square by yourself. Okay, remember? Nine plus nine x minus five. Or else your long division will start halfway. So divided by two x minus one, right? So, oops. Okay, so I want to eliminate the first term. So I want to get four x cubed is my objective. So I will need to multiply two x square in order to get my 4x cubed so 2x squared minus first term minus second term so it will be minus 2x squared here have an invisible minus huh? everyone know that so this is 4x cubed and 4x cubed I simplified this is 2x squared plus 9x so I will need to plus x because my objective is to get 2x squared here so I get 2x squared minus x alright then I will have um, 10x minus 5 so I will plus 5 I will get 10x minus 5 all right so I I done here so I will just uh, write according to what they want so this is 2x minus 1 is my linear factor my quadratic fa factor will be this one all right so it will be 2x squared plus x minus 5 is my px okay so this is basically what they want 
and okay we still have is it related is it related is it related um <laughs> yeah it's, it's related okay so first thing is show that this one equals to zero can be written like this so okay so first thing we need to analyze this is everything in terms of sign here we have some tangent we have some second and second square so okay so my objective right now when i see the equation like this i change everything into sine and cos why because even though you have the cos right you still can do the cos square equals to one minus sine square you still can change it back to the size okay so yeah tangent is sine x over cos x second is one over cos x minus four sine x minus uh second is cos square x equals zero and just nice we're here i have cos square x also right okay so this is 13 sine x over cos square x but here i don't have the cos square x it's all one isn't it so i kind of need to like multiply the cos square here multiply the cos square here okay you, you get it right so i make everything together the cos square x i write at the middle so this one become minus 4 sine x cos square x minus 5 equals 0 and because it's equal to 0 so i can move my cos square to the other side it's 0 as well so i can cancel out the cos square x because you just imagine cos square x multiply 0 or you multiply cos square x for both sides all right uh, okay so this is what i left here like what i say just now if you see the cos square x here you can basically change to 1 minus sine square x right because we have a formula sine square plus cos square equals to one if you're not sure about this formula you can flip back to the first page you basically you will see that um yeah this is 13 sine x this one will be minus 4 sine x plus 4 sine cube x minus 5 equals zero then i have 4 sine qx this one minus i will get 9 plus 9 sine x minus 5 equals to 0 they asked us to show right and then i will write uh, shown here okay so um okay so you realize this one can change into this right so which is the 4 sine cube x plus 9 sine x minus 5 equals to 0 so you're not going to redo the whole thing again huh? this is the purpose they ask you to use the answer on part a part two and b part one why well, need to use the a part two this is b part one right a part two basically you already factorized uh, this equation do you see this actually is the same thing they, they just change the x into the sine only they just change the x into the sine x so you see carefully they are the same equation so i'm not going to redo again so i go i'm going to use this answer okay so let me just do here if you understand so i will change my x into the sine x here and equals to zero so therefore i factorize i will get two sine x minus one and then this is two sine square x plus sine x minus five equals to zero so i just solve this equation because i already factorized okay should be understandable right so first thing is yeah this one i solve this one i get sine x equals to one over two if i solve this one i kind of need to factorize again this one will, will be what uh will be two sine x and sine x um five you know get one it'll be no this one will give us a decimal so yeah so this one i will use the calculator to find the sine x so we do the eqn thingy so a is 2 b is 1 c is negative 5 so yeah so you will get the sine x equals to 1.351 and then this one sine x will equals to another answer negative 1.851 all right so yeah this one is 
quite easy. X is equal to 30 degrees. You need to know what is the range of the X here. The range of the X is given is between 0 to 2 pi. All right, so cannot write degree anymore. So this one, if I change to the radian, will be pi over 6. And the next one will be second quadrant, will be pi minus answer. Pi minus pi over 6 will be 5 pi over 6. Okay, so then this one you can just use the calculator, but make sure you change your calculator into the radian. So yeah, then you just shift sign 1.351. Um, yeah, because psi cannot get any value more than 1 and less than negative 1, right? So therefore, these two answers should be rejected. So I believe you only have one, you only have these two answers, which is pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. <laughs> Can you understand the last part or not? Because this one, they ask you to use their previous answer. And this equation actually same with our what? 4x cubed plus 9x minus 5 equals zero. It's exactly the same thing just now. Um, they just write in the sign x. So this is the reason why I use back I use back the equation we already solved here. I just change all my x into the sign x uh, and then I solve from here. So so that I no need to redo the factor theorem thingy for, for this equation. Yeah basically the top part you have to copy down and write it here. Can get it? Yes or no? <laughs> yeah. You sure nah? This was so hard, wow. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um. Okay. I, I going to stop for a while and then I, I send another link uh, because the Zoom going to stop me in five minutes. All right. So for the question number eight here, they give you y equals to the x e negative two x, and I will ask you to do the dy dx. First thing you see x in front of the e x, you know this one is the product rule. So for the product rule over here, um, yeah, u will equals to x, my v will equals to e negative two x. Okay, separate them into u and v, and then yeah, do du dx equals to one, then dv dx will equals to uh, negative two e negative two x. Alright, so the product rule tell you that dy dx will equals to u multiply dv dx plus v multiply du dx. So u is so basically it's crossover multiply la, and then you plus them together. Okay, so x multiply negative two e negative two x plus v is e negative two x multiply one. Yeah, just like that. Uh, yeah, if you want to further simplify, you can do that. You f further simplify, you just like factorize out the ex here. But yeah, just depend. You you okay to leave your answer like this, or you prefer actually to further simplify it? But I will always like, take out the e negative two x here because look nicer <laughs> a little bit. So here I will get one right. So I take out the one. Here I have minus two x right. So it's minus two x. Okay, I prefer leave my answer in this pattern. Okay, and then the next thing is find the exact coordinate. Exact, uh, exact is a very, very important keyword here. That's mean you have to leave in the E form. Cannot use calculator for decimal. Okay, so yeah, find the exact coordinate of stationary point. Stationary point means what? dy dx is equal to zero, isn't it? So this is my dy dx. So e negative 2x equals to 0 or 1 minus 2x equals 0. So I basically, <laughs> I just make the whole thing equal to 0. Then I write one more step. Because some of you might wondering how I get that one. Yeah, this one equals 0, right? This is two bracket, right? So we, you solve the quadratic before you know you can separate them, right? All right, then I move the e to the other side. This one I get ln 0, but can ln be 0? Cannot write a lot cannot be zero, you will get math error. Um so therefore yeah, ex can't be zero also. Then why they ask about exit? Oh, because the y value. Okay, okay, I I get it. 
So it's just write rejected for this one. This one cannot be solved. This one x will equals to one over two. But they'll ask about coordinate, right? So we need to have y. So I will just sub into the y here. Y equals to half e negative two half. So yeah, you need to solve this one. This is half e negative one. So this e negative one is one over e, right? So it's one over two e. So your exact coordinate will be half and one over two e. Okay. Yep. Then we go to the part three here. Find in term of e the equation tangent to this one at this point. So in order to find equation of tangent, you need to know how to get the gradient of tangent. Basically, gradient of tangent is equals to dy dx. Okay. After you sub the x equals to one into here, then you can get the uh, gradient of tangent. So we have the dy dx above there. So which is this one, e two x one minus two x. So e negative two x and then one minus two x. This one is my dy dx, but I need to sub one into dy dx, right? So this is e negative two, one minus two. So from here, I will get e negative two is one over e squared. This is negative one, so it's negative one over e squared. So this one is my gradient of tangent. But I want to get equation of tangent. I will need to use this one. Y minus y one, one minus e squared equals to negative one over e squared. Uh, minus uh, then we have x right. X minus one. Okay, y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1. So I will just solve this equation. Negative 1 over e squared x plus 1 over e squared. So, okay, my y equals to 1 over e squared x plus 2 over e squared. Because I move this one to the other side, they are same denominator. So basically, I just plus them together and then I will get my correct answer here. So, yeah, this is how I get the equation of tangent. So first, whenever you see equation of tangent, first thing is you need to get the gradient of tangent. Yeah, this one, how to get this one? Do dy dx, sub x value into the dy dx. Okay, then second step, you will need to sub into the, this formula to form the equation of the tangent. Because in order to use this formula, you need to have two information. Information number one is the gradient of tangent. Second information, you will need a coordinate. Yeah, because sometimes they will say, okay, when x equals to one, that doesn't give you the y coordinate. And that, and at those case, you kind of need to uh, sub the one into the y to, uh, sub the x equals to one into the y equation to find the y coordinate by yourself. But in this case, it's very kind. He already give you x and y. Yeah, sometimes they will just give you x only. All right, um, okay, use the answer in the part one to, to do this. All right, so where's my answer in the part one? Okay, dy dx equal to da 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 da. Okay, I'm going to copy this thing. Uh, dy dx equals to what? E negative 2x, one minus 2x. Alright, uh, since I need to use this answer to actually solve this part, um, I will just expand this one first. Um, later I, I explain why. This is e negative 2x minus 2x e negative 2x, isn't it? Why I want to expand? Because I want to find where is this thing hidden. So basically, it hide over here, isn't it? Do you see this is the question that they asked for? Uh, x, e, negative 2x. So therefore, if I find them, so what I will do is I will add the integration sign for every single one of them. Add the integration sign here, add the integration sign here, and add the integration sign here. Because I see, yeah, this is exactly my question. Since my question is here, that means what? I need to make this one as a subject. This is my whole ob objective. So, but then this is negative two. So what I will do is maybe I can move the whole thing to the other side, become positive two. And then when I integrate dy dx, I will get y. And I have the equation y above. 
Okay, so if you able to see that, then I'm going to do it for you. So I'm going to move the whole thing here, become like this. Negative, I just make them become positive. Yeah, you can add a DX here if you want. Yeah, if you don't want, then just ignore it, doesn't matter. Okay, all right, and then here I have integrate e negative 2x. I will just integrate it. e negative 2x over negative 2. And then this one, I just move to the other side, become minus integrate dy dx. We get y, isn't it? Integrate dy dx, we will get y. Huh? Just remember this one. And what is the meaning of y? You just copy the y above. What is my equation of y? It's here x e negative 2x. x e negative 2x. Okay, so I almost done. So therefore, I know I integrate e x e negative two x. I don't like about the two here. I'm gonna move the. I I'm gonna divide two for every single one. Then this one I will get, uh, e negative two x over negative four, minus x e negative two x over two. Yeah, just like that. If you prefer to join them together, you can do that. And remember plus c lah, definitely remember plus c. Yep, so far so good. <laughs> Integration. <laughs> okay, seems like you all are very smart. Let's move on. Yeah, you all don't do metrics already, right? In your school also. So we're going to. S yeah, because metric you only do for your extended math, right? Yeah, I think so because I remember last year I read the 2020 exam that don't have metrics anymore. So I will just skip the metrics. Um, binomial. Alright, so expand this one and evaluate its coefficient. So basically, when I see something like this, basically you need to expand all the terms and simplify them. Alright, so let's explain. So 3 plus x. So the first one is 3 power 4 Very easy, take the a power 4 Next term will be 4c1 And then 3 power 4 right Then the 3 power of minus 1 3 And then this is x power 1 And then when 4c2 3 uh, x square uh, 3 square x square Plus 4c3 uh, 3 1 x cubed And then plus the last one, x power 4. Okay, so then I will just simplify this one using calculator. Uh, 4 times 27, 108. Uh, 4c2 times 9, 54, 12. Yep, this is what happen when they ask you to evaluate things each coefficient basically you need to expand all of them and then live in the simplest form all right so in the expansion of this one the coefficient of x is zero what's the meaning of coefficient of x coefficient of x means the number in front of the x like this case like this case my coefficient of x is 108 this one we call coefficient of x is 108 so if you ask me coefficient of x square, over here will be 54. You understand? Basically mean the number in front of the x or x square. This one means the coefficient of them. Alright, so but then this one they are basically they use the 3 plus x power 4, which is exactly this thing. Multiply with this term. Okay, now you need to think something. Okay, we know this one, we expand, we get this right, right? So if I get x plus p over x here. Okay, here, of course, you can insert all the five terms over here. But then right now, my objective is only want to get a coefficient of x. So I need to think like x multiply which term here, I will get x power 1. p over x multiply which term here, I will get x power 1. So if you understand what I'm saying here, I definitely I will put the 81 here. Because x multiply 81, give me 81x. And then, yeah, this term... Actually, not so useful, but you want to write, you, go, you can just write. And then definitely I need x square. Why? Because p over x multiply 54 x square give me x power 1. And then I do need x cube and x power 4. Both of these won't give me x power 1, no matter which term multiply them. So therefore, I will say coefficient of x 
is equal to zero. So how to get a coefficient of x? So x multiply 81, I get 81x. But I, I, I don't write the x because here is the coefficient of them. Okay, so and then p over x multiply 54x squared, I get 54p equals to zero. So therefore, 54p equals to negative 81. P will equals to negative 81 over 54. And then you will, you can simplify from there. So you again, divide 27, negative 3 over 2. Okay, you get it? I hope so. <laughs> okay, fine. What's this term independent of x? What is the meaning independent of x? <laughs> Anyone know what is the meaning of independent of x? Oh my god. <laughs> it's without x. Okay, in other words, it means constant. So, okay, come back to here. So many terms here, we have five terms here. Which one is independent of x? You guess? Which one will give you independent of x? Yes, you are right. A 81. Independent is just many in independent means not related, something like that. Lah. So it's basically mean without x. So right now, they ask you to find the term independent of x. So that's mean, how to get independent of x here in this expansion? Because x, no matter which term you multiply, you will also get x one. So the only one way to get independent of x is use the over x multiply the x, isn't it? So therefore, I will use the p over x multiply 108x. Then you can see x and x are simplified already, right? No more x. What is my p? Negative 3 over 2 multiply 108. Then I, so I will solve this one. Uh. So you will get a negative 162. You get it? So yeah, you can try other term. They will also definitely will give you the x also. So the independent of x is only that one. Okay, so yeah, they just give one mark for that. Okay, show that coefficient of x squared is 90. Okay, now you need to think how to get x squared here. Um, definitely x multiply with x, you will get x squared. And then p over x, you need to multiply which term to get x squared. You need to multiply x cubed, isn't it? So I kind of need to insert one more term, 12x cubed. Uh, never, never mind, let me insert all the term here. So in order to get x squared, my p over x need to multiply this term. Now because some of you, actually you just used to use the x multiply every single one, and then use the p over x multiply every single one. You can do that, you can do that, but it's going to waste you some time. So therefore, if you understand, you can straight away find which term will give you x squared. So basically, x will multiply this one. So is coefficient of x squared. x multiply 108x, you get 108x squared, right? So coefficient is 108. And then p over x going to multiply this one. So it's 12p. And I have my p, right? Uh, negative 3 over 2. So it's 1086 minus 18, then I get 90. They asked me to show, right? I will just write, shown here. Do you get it? Yes, right. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, let's have a look some question like this. Um. Okay, I, I'm going to show you how to do question uh, 11 here. Um, yeah, this is one of the topic a lot of students don't like it. Yeah, you can go to, I have about, I think more than five videos in my YouTube channels is about this topic. If you are interested, you can go check it out. But here, since I want to solve this question, I try to use the easiest way to explain about this topic. Um, wow, the easiest way is also quite hard. <laughs> okay, okay. First thing is, 
Okay, this topic, you need few knowledge first. You need few knowledge. First thing you you need to do the, you need to use some trigo formula to solve it. So when I say trigo formula is in this topic, right, you only will draw triangle one. You need to draw out the triangle and then you won't have rectangle, pentagon or whatsoever. You only have triangle in this topic. This topic, uh, they call relative velocity. Maybe in your textbook, they actually join into the vector topic. Okay, so, oops, velocity, velocity. Okay, this is the first thing. I believe you all already know all the trigger formula, so I'm not going to introduce that. And then you also need to know some relative rule. Uh, what do I mean by relative rule is something like this. Uh, basically, this is a vec vector knowledge. Um, you need to know how to find a resultant vector, right? Um, example, if I have this vec this three vector here, if I say a to b is my resultant vector, I say a b here is the re resultant vector. So you should know you should know that um, in order to go a b, you can let's say this is c, you can go to a c plus the c b right. So if AB is a resultant vector, it will equal to the AC plus CB, right? Because this is resultant vector. This is how the resultant vector work. Uh, must start with A and with B. The middle, these two must be the same. Okay, this is the second knowledge you need to know how to find the resultant vector. Okay, the last thing you need to know is a sort of the formula. Uh, various, if I want to do velocity A relative to the B, <laughs> this is A relative to the B. Uh, the, for the formula is like this. You must start with the velocity of A plus the velocity of B. This is how I write the formula. So you can, you, okay, two things you need to realize. First is this is equal sign and this is plus. When this is A, right? Then here must be A. Is this B, right? This one must be B. Okay, and what's the purpose of giving you this formula is because velocity of A will be always is your resultant vector. Then these two vectors you need to join together to get the velocity of A. Okay, velocity of A, A can be plant, can be boot, can be human, can be anything. Lah. Yeah, A, B normally is either, for B here is normally is either is the wind, normally we call it A, or is either can be or is either can be water. Uh, when we see the water case, I will tell you the river case, they call it re river case. I will explain more. Okay, if you understand some, all the basic here, then we're going to go into these questions. Okay, the question says, uh, a plane which can travel at a speed of 300 km per hour in the steel air. So that's mean, okay, never mind. Uh, uh, head due north. The plane is blow, uh, blown off caused by the wind so that it travel on the bearing of 10 degree at a speed of 280 km per hour. Okay, so over here, first thing is you want to know what is the velocity of the plane first, which I use P to represent the plane. So the question actually tell, tell you that uh, the plane actually blew off, uh, blown off caused by the wind so that it travel on the bearing of this one, but then the plane at this speed, isn't it? So this one will be 280. It's the velocity of the plane. And then what is the velocity plane relative to the wind? Is you will see this keyword. It's super important keyword in the steel air. This one means what? It's 300 km per hour. This is plane relative to the wind. Because this 300 is base, basically... Yeah, it's, it's basically... It's the speed between the plane and the air. So it's, they, are, they are relative, la, mean, means they are relevant. Relative, la, basically just relative, okay? <laughs> okay, um, and then because we want to form this formula, right? If I write velocity plan relative to the wind, you should know the first one, this is velocity of P, right? Must be the same here. This one must be velocity of the wind. And we do not have the velocity of wind. So this is the reason why they ask you to find a speed of wind. And then one or another thing is, this formula is not for you to insert the number and then to plus them. 
you can only insert this equation when it is one dimension. What does it mean by one dimension? When the particle is only move left and right, then you can use this formula. Or you can substitute into this formula if they are in column vector. A, B. You understand about column vector, right? They are in column vector form, you can use this formula. So in this case, what is the purpose of this formula? The purpose of this formula just to help you to draw the triangle, to find out which one is a resultant vector, where is the, your arrow and so, and so forth. Okay, so, so therefore, this formula here, not for you to insert the value, huh? just for you to draw the triangle. Okay, so right now I want to draw the triangle, but and then I need some directions. So this is the reason why you can see uh, the plane is blown off caused by the wind so that it travel on the bearing of 10 degree um uh, okay so i do not know where is the plane travel but i know this 10 degree is belong to plane relative to the wind here what's the 10 degree look like this is the north here like this is a 10 degree isn't it yeah from here is 10 degrees so but because this 10 degree, I think I think it's not the velocity of the plane. It's a velocity plane relative to the wind. Because now you have three vector. One, two, three. So okay, never mind, let's try it out. So the the, the plane is travel on the bearing of tens. Yeah, I think so. So okay, this is velocity plane relative to the wind. This is 10 degree. This is north. This is the first vector. And then I need... Oh, wait. The plane which blah, 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 travel due north. Sorry. I'm wrong. <laughs> this 10 degree is belong to plane. Because uh, this one speed in the steel air already tell you is due north. So that means this one is velocity of the plane. And then... Yeah. And then, and then this line will be due north, right? So I need to know velocity of the plane is my resultant vector, right? So if this one is my resultant vector, I need two more lines can make this one resultant vector. So your this line north one, you have two choice. One you can connect from here, become to make this vector become resultant vector, plane relative to the wind. And then my another line will be like will be like this, uh, and the direction will be here velocity of the wind so you can see right now my velocity of plan is my resultant vector right start from here and at here and then these two vector basically is plus like this one plus this one and you might have another drawing normally you have two drawing one another drawing is something like this okay let's say this is my velocity of the plane is my resultant vector my my plane relative to wind, I can draw here, isn't it? And then wind, I can draw like this. Velocity of the wind, velocity plane relative to a wind. Both of these triangle will also give you the correct answer. Okay, just depend which one you like. Okay, um, but anyway, the very important one is, you might ask, what if you want to connect like this? Can or not? Cannot. If you con, if you connect this one, velocity plane relative to the wind over here, then this is no longer resultant vector. So you cannot simply connect the vector, but then you kind of need to follow the resultant vector rule. And then you ask about, how about this one? Because the velocity of wind here, you do, you do not know about the direction. Yes, you're right. So therefore, this one is just, I assume, this line can be like this, can be like this, can be like this, can be like that one. I don't know one, but I right now I need to solve the triangle and get the angle in order to know where exactly it travel. So I will just simply assume it travel in this direction. Okay, plan relative to the wind. Okay, if like this already, since this is due north, so I know this line and this line is parallel, right? So I know this is 10 degree. And then we have some information, 280 here, 300 here. Okay, right now my objective is to find this speed, right? Do you see this triangle? You have two sides and one angle in between. You want to find the length of opposite side. What rule you will use? You use the cosine rule, isn't it? So you remember this formula? 
a square equals to b square plus c square minus 2bc cos a I say you need to use trigo formula right so therefore velocity of the wind is equals to 280 square plus 300 square minus 2 280 300 and cos 10 and then the, the square here right move to the other side I will square it the whole thing then I will type the whole thing into the calculator to get my velocity of the wind so 280 square plus 300 square minus 2 times 280 times 300 and change back to radian uh, remember, uh, change back to degree sorry and then time cos 10 and then my square root my answer so I get my velocity of the wind uh, velocity of the wind will be 54.33 Okay, or you write 54.3. Okay, then the next thing is they ask you to find the direction of the wind as the bearing correct to the nearest degree. So right now we have this speed 54.3. But then the question is then I want to know wh uh, which direction the wind actually travel because different direction definitely means the different bearing, right? Or different angle. So in order to get the direction of the wind, uh, of course I will need to know what is this angle. Because this angle over here play very important to tell me. Let's say this angle is 50 degree, then the wind actually in the six, uh, in the bearing of 60, right? If this angle is 100, then we will in the bearing of 110. Okay, just so therefore I need to find this theta. Then I will use the sine rule, sine theta over 300, over equals to sine 10, over 54.3 okay then I will just solve this one to get the angle divided by 54.3 multiply 300 and then I shift sign answer so this data tell me is 73.6 never mind I write 73.6 first okay then you need to think is it possible this one will be because sine will get positive in the first quadrant and second quadrant right if i i try to get the angle in the sec second quadrant um i would i can use 180 minus it right i'll get 106.4 okay so from here yeah, this angle I have two possibility because this is 10, 10 degree right whatever angle this is it will affect this angle as well but here they do they say any obtuse angle and so on no right if don't have then my bearing okay then my bearing of wind can be either this angle Okay, I call it 74 plus 10 is either 84 or this one I call 107 plus 10, 117. Yup. Um, but the curious part is the marking scheme only say 117. So I want to know why it cannot be 84. Does the question say anything about that? So it traveled on 10, this is 84. Find the direction of the wind bearing correct to the nearest. Yeah. It doesn't say anything about obtuse angle and it doesn't hint anything about that. So I believe maybe both of these answers also can be accepted. Yeah, so this is relative velocity. <laughs> Do you find it fun? Yeah, actually, I would say the difficult part about this re uh, relative velocity is drawing the triangle. After you draw, because the hard part about draw triangle is you will need to have specific direction and then you will need to know you have three lines you have three vector normally they only will give you two and then the last vector like this case the wind you need to like simply draw yourself to make 
velocity of plan as your resultant vector. So you have these three lines, you need to know how to basically you want to connect these three vector to make velocity of plan as a resultant vector and then you need to like fill in the correct information. After you draw out the triangle correctly already, normally you can either use the cosine rule or sine rule to solve the triangle. Solving the triangle, I don't think it's a difficult part, basically it's just a formula. But draw the correct triangle normally is a challenging part. But it's not like impossible to understand. So yeah, this is everything about this topic. Okay. I'm going to teach you about kinematic as well. Um, no worry. I think after this, uh, after this MCO, uh, when go back to the center, I would, I will, I will reteach this topic, also. But then here, I just like give you some brief understanding about this topic, kinematics. Yeah, because it cannot be like. 15 minutes we teach these two topics, right? Um, okay. Oh my god, another 10 minutes. Okay, let's see how far we can go about kinematics. Okay, kinematics is what I say about one dimension just now. Basically, it's about a particle, it can only move left or right. Okay, this particle will, 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 will not go north or, or south, it will just go left and right. Definitely this particle, it can make you turn and then you can stop on, on this line. Uh. And then the distance on this line, uh, we call it X exit, it doesn't matter, it's just an exit. This line, the distance on this line, uh, they actually call it displacement. So that's mean, that's, that's mean uh, S or X or S. So when I say displacement equals zero or X equals zero, that means it's origin here. So if let's say I say five here, that's mean the part if the particle stop here, that's mean when s equals to five. When the particle stop at negative three here, that's mean s will equals to negative three. The particle will be here. This is particle A and particle B. If you ask me, okay, what is the distance between particle A and B? The distance maybe in this case is in meter, then it will just uh eight meter. This is the distance of A B. Okay, so first thing is you have three terms here, you have S, stand for displacement. Okay, displacement you can imagine is sort of the location. Where is the location or where is the displacement of the particle? And then you have V. V, I know you explain right, velocity. And then you have A, which is the acceleration. So, over here, um, for V, it's actually quite easy. When velocity is positive, mean the particle actually traveling in uh, this direction, which is due, due right. When velocity is negative, mean the particle going on the another direction. Okay, A here, A positive and A negative, we cannot see on our diagram, but we will use it to find some value uh, by using the A here. So basically, S negative mean is actually is before the origin, O. S is positive mean after the origin, mean the po positive x exit and negative x exit. You should be able to understand easily. V positive mean going to the right, negative mean going to the left. A we cannot see, okay? This is the first information you need to understand. The second information you need to know is how to convert between them. This is one of the very important thing. Let's say S, if, I, if, if the equation give me S, I want to get the equation of V, I need to differentiate S. So ds dt will equal to the v. Same idea, if I have v, I want to get a, I will need to differentiate v. Okay, so on the other side, if I have a, I want to get v, I will integrate a, I will get v dt. Why always dt? Because this topic is related to the time. So it's always dt at the bottom. So therefore, if you have v, you want to get s, definitely you will integrate v. So it's, it's quite easy to understand, right? Going this direction is differentiate. Going back this direction will be integrated. Yeah, this is just depend what you have and what you want to find. Okay. If you understand so far, yeah, let's go into this question. I hope the 10 minutes is enough for me to finish this one. Uh, so a particle is moving in a straight line. T 
p second after passing through the fixed point o that's mean this is o right t is the time after this particle leave the o then only you start to calculate the time so that's mean the particle at the o time equals to zero and at the origin we know displacement is zero isn't it so therefore this sentence you will always see it one this sentence basically mean s equals to zero t equals to zero but why you need s equals to zero t equals to zero because later you need to find c remember when you do the integration you will do plus c at the end right so you will need to use this information to find c later okay by giving you this equation so s stands for displacement right sometimes they will use x huh? so basically you have to understand x and s is the same thing all right so then find the expression of velocity and acceleration of the particle so now you have s they ask about velocity and then they ask about acceleration so if you're not sure how to get velocity and acceleration you can always draw out this one okay as i want to go to v what i will do i will differentiate right so then, then v i want to go to a what i will do i will differentiate right yeah so this is what i will do in order to get v equals to ds dt then i will just differentiate my s here i'll get six sine 2t oh sorry differentiate sine will give me cos cos 2t plus differentiate cos will give me minus sine right minus 8 sine 2t minus 4 give me 0 this is my expression of v so if i want to get a i will do dv dt which is differentiate v will give me a here so my a will become uh differentiate cos give me negative sine negative 12 sine 2t this one will become minus 16 cos 2t done three mark so basically it's not like very hard to understand basically you just remember the chart and then you know how to get your v and your a here and then differentiate you already learned so nothing more for you to to worry here um and then find the first time when the particle is instantaneously at rest so over here they ask you to yeah find the time you need to find the t value when the particle rest rest means what <laughs> you learn about physics right actually no need physics rest basically means the velocity is zero right your rest basically means the particle stop there you don't have any velocity so v equals zero you have the v equation right so yeah 6 cos 2t minus 8 sine 2t equals to zero because the particle rest but okay why you can see the word first time why don't they ask you to find the time they ask you to find the first time because later you solve this trigonometry right your t should have infinity answer right normally in the trigonometry they will give you a range of t something like 0 to 2 pi okay so this is the reason why they ask about first time that's mean later you solve the t that time you only take your first answer here this is the reason why they say about the first time the particle rest that's mean particle will keep on rest one because trigo will keep on go until infinity one isn't it so yeah i need to solve this thing first so 6 cos 2t equals to 8 sine 2t just move to the other side and then sine and cos we see it we divide cos 2t for both sides and then i divide 8 for both sides so we get become like this isn't it so sine 2t and cos 2t i get tangent 2t this is 2t huh? sorry it goes to 3 over 4 all right then i will kind of need to solve this thing um in this topic i prefer leave my answer in radian okay sometimes the marking scheme they allow about degree but this topic i always choose radian okay so yeah i do a shift tangent 3 over 4 so yeah my 2t will equals to 0 0.6435 Three five, my t will equals to divided by two. Zero point three two two. If you prefer second, you can write an s here. This is how you get your time here. Okay, so this is another three mark. And then to find the acceleration of the particle. At the time he found in the part two, 
So that means what is the acceleration when time equals to 0 0.322? Basically, you have the A equation, right? So just substitute into the A equation. Negative 12 sine 2t uh, minus 16 cos 2t. So basically, I'm taking this equation, okay? So yeah, so you just sub in the, the 0 point. Okay, 0 0.322 into here. Sorry. Two multiply zero point three two two minus sixteen cos two multiply zero point three two two. So I will get a equals to negative one point three seven. Yep. So this is my answer here. And I hope this is correct. So no, this is not correct. Find the acceleration of the particle at this time. Why is this not correct? My calculator is radian. Because according to the answer, I would I should get a equals to negative twenty. Yup. Let me just retype it again. Two mount. Oh, I understand already. We have this calculator. Not so smart. Okay, I do slowly manually. Okay, the first value I will get here will be negative 7.2 minus 2 multiply 0 0.322 cos answer times 16 minus 12.8 Okay yeah, you will get a equals to negative 20. Yeah, I think just now I just typed the calculator wrongly. Yeah, then we're done. So you realize this kinematic, you just easily get the 8 mark. So you, you realize this 8 mark basically is just about differentiate, integrate, and then make it zero, solve the trigonometry, and then substitute the value. You don't really actually need some new skill over here in this topic definitely um this topic the hardest part is they, they will ask you to find a distance uh that one is the hardest one the rest should be okay so yeah 